Praise the Lord, everybody. I've got a Bible study for y'all today. <clears throat> and I'm going to conclude my Christian race series. So, so this is the Christian race part four. I'm going to read from the New King James Version today. And I'm going to start with um, two, two different passages of Scripture. The first is um, in 1 Timothy 6, ver chapter 6, verse 11 through 14. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, good, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. That's what I, I want you to focus on. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Je Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pilate. That you keep this commandment without spot, blameless unto our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. And I'm going to skip over to Second Timothy, chapter four, verse six through eight. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. <clears throat> so this is the Christian race part four. So in Apostles, uh, Apostle Paul's letters to, to his young disciple Timothy, he makes an admonition for Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. And in, uh, another, fi in, in another letter, he speaks of his impending execution, saying, I fought the good fight. I have stayed my course. And I have finished my race, and I have kept my faith. In the Christian race, it is very essential that you, you fight the good fight of faith. So, what does it take to fight the good fight? I got about five or six things. Uh, the first thing is flee ungodly things. I'm going to skip over to um, 1 Timothy 6, 3-5. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from which, from such withdraw yourself. And verse 9 and 10. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and the snare and, in, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which dr drown men in, in destruction and perdition. For the love of many is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from faith and their greediness and pierced themselves with, through with many sorrows. <clears throat> and uh, going to read Second Timothy, Timothy 2, verse 22. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, um, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. I'm going to skip over to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Um, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorceress, I mean sorcery, Hatred, contentious, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you um, in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Whew. So there are so many things we have to flee and to keep away from. The big thing is sin. Sin has many faces, and we have to be diligent. We must keep away from false doctrines, wrath, envy, strife, reviling, gossip, corruption, greed, you fool us, and to avoid bearing the fruits of the flesh. Now, number two, pursue the things of God. <clears throat> First Timothy, once again, chapter 6, verse 11. Going to read that again. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, Godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Um, 2 Timothy 2, 24-26 And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, 
correcting those who are in a position, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know it, the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. And Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Whew, hallelujah. So we must pursue righteousness, godliness, or holiness, faith, love, patience, meekness, peace, humility, boldness to lead others to repentance and pull them out of Satan's snares, and having the fruits of the Spirit. Number three, fight the good fight of faith. That is to contend for the faith. Gonna go to the book of Jude and gonna read verse 3 and 4. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning your co common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for, for this condemnation ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So you must stand for godliness and stand against ungodliness. You must stand for what God calls right and against what God calls sin. It is better to be biblically correct than to be politically correct. You've got to make a stand. You'll, you'll, you'll have some unhappy Indians with some people for standing for the truth, but there is no, there's just no room for compromise. There is no shades of gray, just black or white. Number four, um, lay hold to eternal life. Don't stop at your salvation. Get the fullness life of, in, in Jesus Christ. He didn't save you to live your spiritual life by the skin of your teeth, but to have a spiritual life abundantly. You must get past Calvary and live victoriously. Live an overcoming Christian life. Number five, keep your Christian identity in testimony. Never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm gonna read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter nine, verse tw or chapter eight, verse thirty-eight. For whosoever is ashamed of me and my words in, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 36. <clears throat> or maybe it was tw 26. Yeah, 26. For whosoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. And I'm going to read Romans 1, 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. So, to be ashamed of the gospel is to be ashamed of the mighty God who has saved you from the pits of hell. How, how many times have you made God shake his head when he was, when we are ashamed to let our friends, our colleagues, and our neighbors know that you are a child of the most high God? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It should be like fire shut up in your bones like Jeremiah. You may face persecution for your faith. You may be laughed at. You may be cursed at. You may be jailed at some point. But get this, Matthew 5, 10 through 12. I really need to start bookmarking these. Um, <clears throat> Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. <clears throat> so blessed are they who are persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And verse 13 through 16.
You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and, get, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. <clears throat> so, so you are the salt of the earth and the light of the and the light to this lost and dying world. You must be a witness of Jesus Christ. How many will be lost because you don't let your light shine? That consider that. Uh, the book of Acts, chapter four, verse twelve, or actually thirteen. Now, when they saw the boldness, that is the um, Sanhedrin, um, the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained with men, they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Whew. So Peter and John were boldly standing before the Sanhedrin and preaching Jesus Christ. The Sanhedrin concluded that they have been with Jesus. If the world does not know that you've been in Jesus and had a supernatural encounter with the Lord, shame on you. <coughs> Shifting gears now. Paul fought the good fight for at least 30 years. He's awaiting execution in 2 Timothy. He has reason to be depressed. He's about to die, but he's actually confident. Why are you so confident, Paul? You're about to be beheaded. Paul knew that he fought the good fight of faith. He knew that he stayed his course. He knew that he has kept his faith through all that he's been through. He's been through beatings, scourgings, a stoning or two, imprisonments, two shipwrecks, and even a fight for bite. <clears throat> a crown of righteousness and the glory awaits Paul as he pours out his life for Jesus Christ on the execution block. In Matthew 25, 21, and 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the world of the Lord. <clears throat> So, well done. I bet that Paul heard that when he went, and went from this life to heaven. He was a faithful servant through it all. He fought the good fight. He kept his course. He kept his faith through it all. We must push to that same goal. We must keep fighting the good fight. We must stay on the course that God set for us. We must keep our faith even when all hell throws its very worst at us. Conclusion now. Paul gave himself as a model of fighting the good fight and crossing the finish line of the Christian race in a glorious way. Maybe ugly physically as he was beheaded, but it was glorious spiritually. To run the Christian race, it is essential that we fight the good fight, no matter what. Let Apostle Paul be your model of fighting the, the good fight of faith. Run this Christian race and let the finish line get to the finish line no matter what. Keep fighting the good fight. Stay your course. Keep your faith. And that concludes my Christian, my, the Christian race series. God bless y'all in Jesus' name.